I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. Well, hello there, this is Tamil, and today I wanted to go over figure tool, which is pretty easy to use in general. I will show you a little bit tips and tricks that I learned. And then I'll make a study only using direct draw because I think it's so useful that you can actually not use a single brush while doing this because it's very, very intuitive and it actually can improve your work because you're simplifying everything so much. Let's get started. Uh, streamline and saturated line. These are more for manga and direct draw is mainly what I'm going to talk about. It's uh, located right here for me. You can find something similar on your computer as well if you have Clip Studio Paint. Straight line is very self-explanatory. Drag and hold and it creates lines for you. The only thing I can recommend checking out is anti-aliasing. In short, if you don't know what it is, the very right side is going to make it very, very smooth like this and it's going to blend in with the canvas. The left is going to make it very, very sharp. You can just keep it at the very left uh, because it's actually using a little bit of your processing on your computer. So if you have a very slow computer, I recommend having it on the left. If you don't really care, then I would suggest something in the middle. If you have small, small brush strokes like this, uh, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. You can also change the brush shape. Uh, you can change it to watercolor or spray, which is going to create more textured approach, like a pencil or something. I think it's pretty cool as well. The next one is polyline, which is exactly the same thing as straight line, but it's going to create points. In when you create points, it's going to connect them, obviously. Uh, if you hold control, it's going to let you change the points where you rasterize it. You can actually go back and, you know, uh, make something new. Once you've finished it, uh, you can also look and see that it has different modes. The cool thing is the fill mode. And in short, it's going to just create fill of whatever color you selected, it's going to rasterize it and give you the shape of it. Uh, you can also do that with selection and then you fill it and then you deselect. But it takes time and it's just, you know, super easy to use it like this. The next one is curve, which is very similar to straight line. But if you click, hold and drag like this, after you let go, it's going to give you this and it's going to let you just choose an angle that you're going for. So you can be very precise with your drawings or with your line. Uh, continuous curve, you know, it's uh, not the one that I use the most. I think it's just uh, to make very, very subtle uh, lines without making anything too sharp. Uh, and I think the most versatile one is the Bezier curve, which at the very end, like there are different modes, how you can create the curve. The first one is a straight line and the second and third uh, are a little bit unfamiliar to me. This one is, I think, the most versatile. It's going to be just like the pen tool in other software like Photoshop, for example. You can create straight lines if you just click and it's going to create straight lines. If you click and drag, it's going to create a curved line. You can also hold control and again, you know, go back and you can change the angle. You can also hold these. So you see the little, little X marks that you can actually change the curvature of the thing after you created the line. So it's going to be like this, pretty awesome. If you hold Alt, it's going to reset it. And now you can get a more, you know, evenly spaced angle. A little trick for you, you can go ahead and create a new vector line. Uh, create whatever you might want to create for your drawing, finish it. And you can go back into Operation, Object, click on it, and it's going to give you all those curves again. So you can create it, forget about it, and come back to it if you want to add anything to it. I think it's uh, very, very useful if you're working with very precise artwork. Another thing you can do, you can create rulers that will follow the line tool or whatever you're using. So let's say perspective ruler, right? And I create perspective points. So this is my horizon line. 
If you want, you can check out my tutorial on perspective in Clip Studio Paint. And now I can use straight line in order to create different things in perspective. So let's say if I want to create a box without worrying too much about perspective. Now that I created this, I can just use this for whatever I want as a buildup or as a base for future drawing or just leave it like that. Pretty cool. Uh, the awesome thing is that other tools also follow it. So if I click rectangle, you can also create windows. And I think it's super useful for anyone who's doing buildings or environment or just pretty much anything to construct your room or whatever it might be. You can also create uh, ellipses in perspective. So now I almost you know, created the perfect ellipse. I just need to fix this little corner. But other than that, it's pretty perfect ellipse in perspective for this cube exactly. But I think the coolest thing is lasso fill. And I'll show you how I used it in my time lapse a little bit later, but let's go over the functionality for it. In short, it basically creates uh, color fills of whatever selection that you made. And uh, another thing that is really, really extraordinary is you can use it in transparency mode. Clip Studio Paint has two colors. So if you click X, it's going to toggle between the two, but it has a third one, which is the transparency and it's going to use whatever tool that you have picked as an eraser. In order to do that, you can either click on it or hit C for a shortcut. And now if I created this explosion, for example, I can actually go back and remove the things that I didn't like or add the things that I want. And with X and C shortcut, it's going to give me very, very uh, fast workflow into creating different shapes and different, you know, uh, textures to whatever I'm trying to create. So let's say I created this explosion. It's pretty good, but I would like to create an uh, overlay inside of it so that I don't have to, you know, try to delete this little part. So I can just go into transparency and delete it the way I wanted to. And just like this, I created this really, really stylized, cool explosion. This would take me a lot longer if I would use any other tool or like brush. Uh, you can achieve the same effect, but it's just the time and the convenience that actually does it for me. Another cool thing is opacity. So if I want to add to this, but I don't want to, you know, make everything black again, I can go over here, do 50% and actually add more depth to my explosion. So I created this and I like it a lot, but what if I want to add more depth and every time I do it, it's becoming these little messy, weird things, right? And let's say I just don't like them. Well, you can also use the lasso fill in different modes, just like a brush. For example, you can use it in darken mode. That mode is going to affect only pixels that are lighter compared to the color that you picked. So let's say I pick this color and I go just a little bit down and I keep the opacity to 100, now I can actually create more inside of that without getting weird uh, opacity issues like I did before. And to speed up your workflow, again, you can also use lock transparency pixels. So if you click here and you have one same layer, you can now use this just inside of the shape that you just created, which helped me a lot when I was painting because if you have the shape that you created with the selection fill and you lock the transparency, now you can just work within this shape without worrying about anything else. And by using blending modes, which maybe darken or lighten or overlay, now I can actually add more to my painting. So let's just say I want to do overlay and I do more uh, lighten. Now it's only going to affect a little bit. Uh, layer by layer, but it's not going to affect my black at all because overlay doesn't work on black or pure white. And things like that will make you painting faster and it's actually going to force you to learn more about blending modes and the way you could use them with opacity. And that is about it on the technical side of it. Uh, you can also add more things to it. I'll uh, link at least one video from Clip Studio Paint in the description. I think that one is pretty cool. It's going to let you create similar tools, but add more things to it. So functionality wise for me, 
uh, the lasso fill and all these other tools are enough in terms of functionality. I will show you in the time lapse how I used these tools uh, in order to create the painting and it actually forced me to learn a lot because I was so limited to only this without any fancy brushes or anything else that forced me to think about the shape that I'm trying to make. It forced me to think of a color that I'm trying to put down and I really liked it and I really enjoyed uh, the painting so let me know if you learned anything let me know if you have any questions and happy painting